We're talking about hockey and music right now, uh, intertwined in the culture of our country, but it took longer for our next guest to warm up to Canada's favorite game compared to the vocation you know, that he is known for. Grant Lawrence is his name. spent 15 years as a lead singer of the Smugglers before becoming a CBC Radio 3 host, eventually becoming a beer league goaltender, unfortunately a lover of the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, not going to hold it against you. Grant has written a book about his love affair with hockey. It's called The Lonely End of the Rig, Confessions of a Reluctant goalie and I'm emphasizing that word because I, I bet you if you went back to when you were five years of age as you wrote in the book you would have never thought you were going to play That's, the game of that hockey. That is exactly right and good morning. Thanks, yeah, good morning. Thanks, yeah. thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for having me on the show. Wow it's it's still dark out but I'm, I'm here and happy to be here but yeah if you told me if you told me at age five if you told me at age 10, 15, 20 yeah. that I would uh, be celebrating 10 years as a beer league goalie, I would probably scream and run the other way <laughs> thinking that you were crazy because I had a very, very conflicted relationship with uh, uh, sports, specifically hockey, from an early age. Yeah. I mean, my parents were big winter athletes and my dad was a jock and he was uh, original season ticket holders for the Canucks. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, okay, yeah, from, yeah. The, from day one. And uh, I, I, was, I learned how to skate as soon as I could learn how to walk. But unfortunately, I associated... Uh, intimidation and bullying with the game of hockey because I was the little runt in my class sure and all the big guys wore the hockey jackets and they rained down the abuse on me so I couldn't I couldn't get behind the game well I got a question for you so a guy who was kind of you know turned off by that kind of intimidation thing why did you go in net when the pucks are flying at you? this is the reason because what back when I was growing up uh, if you're the runt in the class, I had the huge Coke bottle glasses. I even had hinged <laughs> knee braces. There are dead. pictures of all this, by the way, yeah, in the book. Yeah. yeah. And and uh, so the, when I even with these knee, I mean, I was just a target. And so if I ever did want to play, if I asked those big guys yeah. in the hockey jackets, they said, "All right, you play goal," because that was the runt's <laughs> position. Now. Uh, big heroic figures like Patrick Waugh and Roberto Luongo yeah. uh, have, have changed the perception of the goalie sure. position. We like Mika Kippersoff and stuff. But uh, yeah, anyway, yeah. Yeah, has yeah, he yeah. retired yet? Uh, yeah, he's gone. He's gone. Uh, he is, yeah. okay. Yeah. Kipper. But uh, so that was the position that I, I, you're basically a target for these guys. Uh, yeah. They took equal pleasure scoring goals or knocking the glasses off my face. <laughs> uh, but then I, uh, when I finally came back to the game to sort of take it back on my own terms, yeah. which is kind of the overall point of the book, I, I guess it was sort of like Stockholm Syndrome. I had grown to love what I was forced to, to do, and now uh, I actually really love the goalie position. And and you, even, uh, you, is this the actual jersey you wear? This is, my, this is my game jersey, and just uh, this is to show you, you see me right now, yeah. here's the size of the average goalie <laughs> jersey. So. There you go. Nice team logo, by the way. The Thank flying you. V yeah, is your homage to music and hockey. Music right? yeah. and hockey, and yeah. uh, and the Canucks in a little bit of a way, the original yeah. logo. Yeah. And then there, yeah. So and those are actually. Your goaltender in the number twelve. Number twelve. Yeah, that is after uh, Jerome Ginla. Really? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, okay. It's after uh, Stan Smeal, uh, the captain that first took the Canucks <laughs> sure. to the Stanley Cup final, beating the. Uh, okay. No, no, not didn't beat the Flames no. along the way, but no. we did a few yeah. times. But anyhow, yeah, so that's, uh, those are real puck marks. Okay, <laughs> I bet they are. Um, okay, so, so that's the point of the book, right? Is yeah. That you can overcome this stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there's, there's a lot of stories about bullying. There's a lot of stories about the abuse that I took. But, I, you know, it's all, I, it's not precious. You know, it's, it's written from a, a humorous perspective. It I is. look back at myself and laugh. It's tongue-in-cheek. It's it totally not is, about yeah. revenge. Yeah. It's about social survival and living life eventually if you if i felt like i was kind of kept out of what what is we're told is one of canada's rite of passages which is ho the sport of hockey playing it cheering for it and uh, so in my adult life after my band career wrapped up i got into it and now look 10 years later and i'm writing about it and talking to you about it <laughs> I, it's, it's like the twilight zone <laughs> You can check out the Twilight Zone effect in Grant's book. It's called The, the Lonely End of the Ring, Confessions of a Reluctant Goalie. Uh, nice to meet you, my friend. Safe travels. Hey. I know you're off to another... Well, you're going into the mountains now, so be safe, okay? The weather's yeah, not good. Yeah, headed back into the wilds of B.C. There so, uh, yeah, it's uh, fingers crossed. Good stuff. Nice to meet you, Grant. Thanks, Ted. All the best. We're going to check...